What would you never tell your current partner? That I'm actually ticklish, but I'm really good at hiding it for a set amount of time. I have this superpower too, wow. Same. Never seen anyone else mention it until this thread. I built a secret compartment into the, the crawl space I finished. There's nothing in there, but it's been so long since I built it. I feel ashamed to admit I kept it a secret. I need to know more. What are the dimensions? Did you dig further? Is it finished differently? The crawl space is in the basement. Concrete walls but earth underneath. The compartment is in the platform I built to level out the space and allow for storage. Three of the planks of wood are secured to each other, but not the platform. But they fit real tight. There's a crowbar hidden in the space that pulls up the panel, which reveals an wooden enclosed one foot cubic box I guess, dug into the earth. She did actually find the fresh dirt when I first built it. She said it looked like fresh dirt on the property line. I told her that it was weird. That she is way I I more like her mom and sisters than she likes to think. I told my mom she was turning into my grandmother and it's basically like slapping them both in the face. My mom has started her transition into judgmental old lady phase. It's sad to see. Mine just stopped coloring her hair. I'm not used to the white hair and it startles me every time I see it that I wish her to say that she loves me more often. I know there are types of people who have a hard time saying that and to be able to express their feelings, but I want to be on the receiving end. Sometimes I want to be the one desired, and by sometimes I mean a few times a month would be enough. It can F one up if you get aware of that and then you focus on it. Little signs of affection can really change the dynamics of a relationship edit, since people are advising me to tell her. I did so in the past. It is good, and it improved over time. But when we got busy it slowly fades away, and we are back to square one. This one makes me sad, because it was the reason I left my last relationship. Feeling unloved is so terrible, even if they don't mean it that way. You should try and tell her that it's something you need, though. Some PPL will try to do it more. He didn't for me, but some PPL will. That I tracked down the man that was inappropriately communicating with our very underage daughter and made sure it would never happen again. Hey, I'm proud of you. If someone did this to my children I couldn't say I would be any different. You could always beat him with jumper cables like most dads do. I do miss my family sometimes. They disowned me for loving her. I don't hold it against her at all, but if I voiced it, I know it'd just break her heart all over again. Ah that sucks. I feel for ya yeah, my dude. What problem did they have with her? The tail of a little cat statue we have on the shelf is super glued on because it snapped off when I was dusting. Set it down, and it fell over. This made me laugh, because it seems such an innocuous thing to keep secret. Does the statue have sentimental value? I must know. How much I really spend on my hobby. There's a musician joke like that. My biggest fear is when I die. My wife will sell my guitars for what I told her they cost. My boyfriend has a lot of antique guns I told him to create a spreadsheet in case anything happens to him. Because it's that or everything must go for $50. That led a fire under his A. My husband plus bikes. I don't know how much they all cost. And I don't wanna know. There's 8 or 9 bikes out there. If you own 8 or 9 of something, you're probably not getting the cheap ones. That I'm still physically attracted to her, but the way she talks down to and about other people makes her really hard to love. Watching her get more and more judgmental was one of the bigger problems that contributed to my split with my ex-fiance. Shit sucks. Yup. I feel bad about feeling this way, but the repeated n-word alone makes me drift. How bad my depression really is. Just because I want to spend time with you without the kids doesn't make me a bad father. It makes me a desperate husband to know my wife Ajian. Holy fuck. This hurts. That's why you gotta still be dating even if you're married. Once a week date or night out without the kids can save your relationship. 1. Find other couple with kids too. Each couple pick a weekday. Once every 1-2 one, weeks maybe. 3. Babysit other couple's kids, while parents have date night and vice versa. My past, not that it matters now, 
I'm just ashamed of my past and happy how my life turned out. I turned my life around. After meeting my wife, mine knows I was a homeless heroin addict in the early 90s. She's seen pictures of me looking like a famine victim. She has never asked a single question about that period of my life. We've been married 20 years. I love that she respects my privacy. That I want to be able to share a bed with her again. But I'm a light sleeper, and she has sleep apnea, and can get very loud at night snoring. Think cold starting a Detroit diesel on a crisp November morning loud. She's so self-conscious of it, that I don't want to bring it up. So I just use the light sleeper excuse, and do not bring her snoring up at all. I come from a family of people with sleep apnea. She needs to look into getting a CPAP machine. They are all but silent now. And my dad, who has been confused for a bare time or three, now doesn't even snore with it on. He said it gave him his first good night's sleep, and he refuses to go anywhere without it. Plus one on the CPAP. I have bad sleep apnea. My wife dealt with it for many years. I should have died with how low my O2 got when I slept. Now I get healthy sleep. My snoring is fixed, and life is better for all. Not sharing could compromise her health. I thought that I would never tell my partner about my criminal past, but I felt that it would be better for her to know, and she made me feel comfortable enough to tell her the truth about my past. I regret everything I've done, and I paid my dues for it. Luckily, she took it really well, and didn't change a bit and expressed her appreciation for my transparency. She really is too good to me. Still going through this myself. Some parts I think I might still be processing myself. Not sure if that makes me selfish for not coming out, but some part of me is afraid that things will be different after. Realistically, we are never going to finish this remodel with our current budget. I know this trick. I love you honey. You almost got me. Tee hee hee. Love you too. Pumpkin. Slash cyan every once in a while. Blow a kiss at your selfie camera. The CIA agent might be having a bad day. Apostrophe. Hey CIA agent, if you're eating this then let me eat your urine care for you. How incredibly much I'm still in love with my late wife. OMG. Imagining being the new second choice is honestly my worst fear. Whether the first wife is alive or not. I'm a widowed woman and this is one of the main reasons I'll never date. Whoever they are, they will always be my second choice. And that's not fair. I wouldn't want my kids to be someone's runner up. I'm not doing that to someone else's child. The best outcome here is to find someone else who was widowed. You're then all on the same page and can enjoy a life together and loved. But understanding both had and lost the love of their life. A friend's parent did this and they've been happy together for almost 10 years now. I get that it isn't always easy to find that person. Especially the younger you are. I'm sure there are specific ways to find it though. No healthy partnership ended too soon would want to see the other live alone forever. You don't have to forget and move on. Just move forwards. Ultimately of course though, what works best for you, works best for you. No pressure either way. We are only together because it's physically easier than splitting up. I don't have a partner anymore. But that's how I felt in the last two years of the relationship. Oh me and you both brother. There were times towards the end that despite me sitting slash laying bed with my partner, I had never felt more alone. I always felt like it was my job, my responsibility to resolve the arguments where she would just go to sleep, wake up the next day like nothing had happened. It was really tiring and upsetting to be honest. This, this is not normal. Oh boy. Yeah it's not. Putting our goom once on hold till you both can deal with it is fine. Ignoring them and pretending they never happened, and whatever. Nah, it makes one person feel like s and the other person thinks all is well and good. Discuss it honestly and openly, and if you respect each other, and don't have differing ideals then it should come to some resolution. What does it mean, when you argue and come to an agreement? Then she just continues to do what she wants? Even though she agreed last week that is, was wrong and the new argued over point that you thought was settled really isn't settled, and she just keeps doing it? I lost my virginity to an escort, but I told my last partner that I lost it to a drunk sorority girl in college. I just assume that's one of those things I would have to take to the grave before I told her to the grave. Lol. 
few more feet under the grave. I'm not suicidal, but I want to die early. I live a fairly healthy life, and don't have many destructive habits, but I don't want to go into old age. I've seen the horrors of it, and I don't want to be here for that. I work my off every day to try, and leave as much inner reds behind as possible. Maybe it's alive, like your dying mints that I fell into, but I'm hoping I'm only here long enough to leave some value behind for those around me. If it doesn't happen for me, I'll accept it. But I'd never tell anyone, because they might think I'm suicidal or just crazy. I'm a nurse and I've seen many older people in various states of health. It really is dependent on how you treat yourself. I've seen 90 year olds able to leg press 450 pounds. And I've seen 50 year olds that look like they're 90. Treat yourself well too. Or you might end up being one of those horrors as an elder. Leg press 450 pounds at 90? Are you a nurse for Hercules? God damn. I'm in the prime of my life leg pressing 315 trying not to blow out a vertebrae or s my pants. That I'm tired, being the only one who initiates any sexual activity. And every time we do anything it's like a chore. S has taken a toll on my body image and self esteem. Honestly there is a lot of people with this problem. Plagued me for years. I have overcome the feelings. Hope you find your way. That how much I've started hating BTS just because of her. Every time I open her insta I see them. Every time I open her phone they are her wallpaper, and when I open her gallery still it's filled with those boys. I literally hate that. That I knew she was the one within two weeks. This one has I would never tell her this. But Pam is a skilled and gifted artist energy. These comment sections always unironically turn into those vibes backslash view 200 deal mayo. That her depression makes my life much harder edit. Not sure how I feel about how this is my highest upvoted post. If she is anything like me, I'm sure she knows and is very aware. Please feel free to express your feelings. I wish my husband did more. It feels more like lying when he tells me it doesn't matter. Yes, I've had talks with my husband to make sure he knows that he can and should express when my depression is bringing him down too much. It's more than okay for another person to need a break from my nonsense. I can't adjust appropriately though, if I'm not sure if he is in the right mental state to deal with my stuff. He is so much better about saying things like, I love you, and I'm sorry you are feeling this way right now. I want to be supportive. But I'm too stressed out myself to be a good listener at the moment. We almost always set a specific time to re-engage and talk so no one feels like they aren't being listened to. That level of kind honesty has been a game changer for our relationship. I like to look at him when he sleeps. It's also the only time I get to hold him and cherish him for giving me three beautiful boys, working so hard, and taking care of us. He doesn't like being touched and that's all I want to do. Not even in a sexual way. I cry thinking about the stories he's told me about what happened to him as a child. I cry because I love him so much, and I don't know what I would do without him. He feels like he's a waste of space and I try every day to make him feel as if he's on top of the world. I love this man so much. This is so sweet. I'm crying. I honestly cried typing this. He means so much to me. How much I love her. That filthy, filthy skank. Dude. Tell her. My wife and I started as friends with benefits. Fuck buddies. We say. I reached out to her one night and we started seeing each other for casual hookups. That lasted about a month slash month and a half. One night we were doing the thing, and when we finished she said, What are we, and what do you want to be? I thought about it and said, I'm not hooking up with anyone else, and I like you a lot. She told me the same thing. We started dating then. At some point we dropped the love word into our relationship. We dated for a year and a half. Got engaged. Engagement for a year. Got married in 2009. Been together 15 years. Married for 13 this upcoming summer. Or while of this story. I'm really starting to like my FWB, but I'm nervous what he'll say if I ask the question your wife did. That I constantly forego my hobbies to be a proper stepfather. There's a balance to it. Giving up your hobbies like that is not healthy even for a bio parent. Gotta keep your identity and do what makes you happy too. 
is there a way for you to teach the kid one of your hobbies? Masturbation marathons is not something that's appropriate to teach children. That she's right most of the time, is that you babe.